This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we analyze the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, have lifestyle conversations. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my co anchor with me, Ife Olua Oshoke. Yeah, that's me. Ife. I had to swallow my tea, sorry. But I was just hoping that would. No, what can I do? Nothing. What can I do for you to. Send two? me um, two million. A million, I'll, I'll stop. A million. My bank account is 07666. Should I go? Is it that bad? <laughs> <laughs> They didn't catch it, try again, do it again. <laughs> no, I didn't finish. You didn't no, finish? Oh, okay. It's intentional. Mm. Before they say I ah, is begging for money. But if you need it, you can, you know, just send the message. See, everybody begs for money. Even federal government begs for money now. Um, so I don't think there's anything I'm really not the federal government with the ones that plan to make a change. So we, we don't so intend don't we, don't, we don't intend to beg. Please me, I also beg oh, but the only difference now is I don't know my account number offhand. So me, I know yeah, my own, but, no, okay. but if you need it, so if you need it, slide uh, into my just, DM. Yeah, slide into yeah, the LC DM. Godwin. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what's up. But we are not begging. No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's move on because it's not looking like begging. <laughs> Ghanaian actress Julius Ibrahim has taken to her social page to speak on racism and colorism. In a post she shared on her Instagram page, she says being referred to as a half caste is the most derogatory term to describe a person of mixed race or mixed ex ethnicity. Her message read in part, and I quote, I had a, con a random conversation the other day with someone and it was appalling when he mentioned passively to me that he doesn't see me as a black woman. He argued, you're not black enough, your skin isn't dark enough, your hair not kinky enough, and thus, my siblings and I do not count as black. End of quote. She went on to encourage that we teach and train our children to grow up and um, accept people for who they are and not by the color of their skin. Mm. End spot of on. Spot on. What she said was spot on, but I also wanted to be considerate and understanding to see why people would say that um, you're not black enough. You're not. Yes, a nationality is, Ghan is um, Ghana, right? She's Ghanaian and because um, her dad is Ghanaian and I think her mom, I can't remember. Liberian when. born, yeah, like, Ghanaian. Yeah. She has. Her mom is from Liberia, but her really mom mixed. is also mixed race as well or something similar to that. So um, it's okay for people to say you're not black. and It's not okay, but understand when they say it. Not, why I'm saying it's not okay is because... Um, Already, your nationality shows that you're African and you're pure African. So people should respect that and love you for who you are and take you as part of them. But that doesn't mean we should be blind to the fact that the fairer you are, the more privileges you have, the better treatment you get. I was saying it the other day when we we're talking about the Black Lives Matter stuff. And I was like, if a Chris Brown is driving down the streets of America, you will probably not get pulled over by the cops like a Gucci Mane or a two chains who is <coughs> dark skin and is in a very expensive car with chains on, gold chains, diamonds and I all that. That's a chain that is. You get, they will probably get pulled over, but a Chris Brown will probably be allowed to slide because he had, he's, he's mixed as well, you understand? And he's light skinned. So we shouldn't take away that privilege. So I think most of those people should be grateful. Should They should be grateful that. So they, should I be grateful as well? You are yellow, you are not. What is yellow? <laughs> Why did you just do that? What what in the world? Okay, um, right now this is but, one. Of but you should be grateful as well because ah. if we really want to face it in in a world where we know colorism is still very predominant, mm. um, a light skinned lady as yourself may get a fairer treatment than mm. a dark skinned lady. But it shouldn't be so. I don't think I'm being treated fairly. I had I had, anyway. I had a conversation here, with though? with a very very close friend of ours, so. and. Um, I made a joke because I was in a car, we were going home and I was, and somebody was like, ah, you guys are acting like daddy and mommy and that looks like your daughter at the back. And I was like, ah, daughter can't be that black. And she went off on me like, come on, man, that we're talking about colorism here. Do you know it's statements like this that gets keyed into people? We are too sensitive in this day. It's not about age. being sensitive. I, I got a point at the end of the day. Do you mm. understand? Because, can I come in? Yeah, you can. Okay. So, um, this is one of those topics that I wish and hope that if Elma is on this table, because I think she understands all this colorism and racism and blackism uh, movement better than I do. However, when I read the story and I saw the conversation, it did not sit well with me because um, the question now is what 
defines a black person is it by the skin or by the dna or by what you think is not as black as should be or as black or as white as should be that's, so is it a case of if you are not place. completely white you cannot be white so you have to become black there are so many things that comes into play here and i i i know even she was saying that she's not comfortable with being called a half cast but growing up i know things are changing and right now apparently things has changed because i i googled half cast and i saw in now the added offensive so it's more like an offensive statement to some people and evidently more in South Africa. I mean, when you use the word half caste, it's stemmed as derogatory. But here in Nigeria, half caste was not seen it as... like the intent, like... No, my girlfriend. Do you understand girlfriend this half caste? Half -caste. Like, it, it was something that kind of showed you to be a bit higher than others in which the is, Keda which, and which all is, that. Which you is know? the so, narrative we're trying to change? We want to change that, that one too. Yes, we have to because... So, I think it depends on where you are, where you are from, but white we, cannot, we cannot take away those that are in the middle and say it's either they identify with white or they identify with black. I think they should begin to understand, first, like you said, their privileges and also understand that this is their skin color and they are not entirely black. A Juliet Ibrahim putting her side by side with Ilupita Yongo. I mean, we know what that is, right? So, yes, there is an in-between, and it differs from country to country, from continent to continent. In Australia, if I was sending me something and saying this is what a black person in Australia looks mm. like. So, it depends on where you are and how you see it. So, I think we need to step away from this insensitive attitude sometimes and just try to understand people's intention. So, maybe when you sense that the intention is really to serve as a derogatory term, then you can begin to have these conversations. I'm not saying stop talking about it, but let's, let's just put some things into perspective and understand that like your skin color is actually different. I like the fact that you, they should pay attention to the context in which they are being referred to as mixed race. If it's being used in a day like... She says she says she's even fine with being called mistress. She doesn't want to be yeah, called half-caste. Well, I don't think I'll call anybody a half-caste either. I, think I have done it I, in my life before. Yeah, Maybe of course now, we've going done it. Forward, yeah. I'll try not to do. Of course, we've all done it. now insensitive. Of course, we've all done it, but I think the proper, appropriate term is mixed race. Okay. So, um... At the end of the day, I think Juliet should just pay attention to what context in which it's used. Mm. Some people want to refer to it so that they can point out your privileges and let you know that, okay, this is why this is happening this way. Mm. But some people are saying it to make it look like, ah, you, you are not African, but you need to know what angle, what part of the world that person is tilting towards. Mm. Are you tilting towards the... Um, white side of you or are you tilting towards the black side of you yeah, if that person is tilting asking. to the black <clears throat> side then you need to refer to them as africans if that person is claiming i'm american then refer to them as americans we all Just, need to actually sit down and answer the question what makes a person an african or a black person maybe when we start answering that question to be easier to like break it down and not make people feel some type of way because we can't just say stop being insensitive anyway but there's something she said in her post which i'm going to take away which is just teach your children to appreciate people, people for who they are you don't have to be a certain type of way or look a certain type of way for me to treat you as a human being mm. or at least allow you have your basic human rights so that's the most important part whether you are Lupita Yongo Black or Juliet Ibrahim Black. That is not the point of conversation as far as I'm concerned. It's about teaching ev um, um, treating everyone equally because they are humans, not because they are black or white or in between or ambiguous. And be careful with your words as well when you're trying to refer to people that are not looking exactly like you mm. because you don't know what is offensive to them. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the truth. Okay, moving on to the next story. Ghanaian dance hall artist Wendy Shea walked out on Accra FM Nana Romeo's interview over questions on affair with her manager, Bullet. Um, Wendy got furious as Nana Romeo repeated, um, repeatedly asked her if she was having an amorous affair with her manager. She, however, cleared the air before walking out and she said, and I quote, I am not dating Bullet. I don't know why most of the time when I go for interviews, instead of focusing on issues that will bring progress in our music industry, I get these questions. Let's focus on my artistry pushing my brand and Ghana to the music to the international level, end of quote. 
Sensationalization is a problem in the sense that um, a lot of OAPs now... Are I looking, think the OAPs in Ghana, I don't know what their problem is. I don't is. think they're professional enough, <sighs> if you ask me, because most of them stumble on the job and they just do it. Oh, Once really? you can speak tree in Ghana, it's fine. Mm -hmm. it's, um, nobody's saying it's not okay to present shows in your mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Yes, I wish we could. Do. We even have Yoruba radio we stations. That, yeah. We have Igbo mm -hmm. radio stations. We have also, But it's really prominent over there, considering the fact that almost all their stations are allowed to speak tree if whether or not I'm from another country and I'm listening to that same radio station if they want to switch to tree it's fine but I cannot go on for 10 minutes saying that it's just you but I want to speak so I think they should focus on that professional side but let's leave the language aside that story for no, another leave it so it's indigenous <laughs> that story for another day but sensationalization was what i started with a lot of them just want to trend they want to be in the news now that's what i refer to as gutter journalism because um despite the fact you want to trend if your guest is telling you i'm not comfortable with this question there's a there's a limit in which you it's and good. you went as far as saying it's, i have evidence you want me to show you, you it's that good you're to, having a relationship it's okay to prove. he was it's, very inappropriate and i think that that should yeah. also amount to harassment because i don't understand why you're prying it's that a much into a life. person's personal and life it's a personal Actually, life the question is fine you asked it first as she said She's not comfortable with it. She addressed it. But you kept on hammering and saying, oh, you have evidence. How exactly do you have a, an evidence of a person's relationship on your phone? Did you tape them having sex? I don't understand. It's, it's cringy. I don't and know. And then why would you have evidence about my relationship? It's not an affair. You're saying, are you dating this person? You did not ask me, are you having a secret affair with this person? Do you understand? So if it's a relationship and we don't want to be in the open, it's our business. So mm. if I'm telling you I'm not comfortable with it, it's my private life life you don't pry into my private life like that so that was quite disturbing and i think um the guy should tender an apology i hope this is not going to be treated like one of those things like somebody just thumbed out and they'll put the blame on the artist because we need to understand that this artist are also human beings yeah. like they also have feelings and they also have a limit to what they want to put out there mm. if they don't want their relationship to be out there it's up to them yeah i think we should also work on having when share on tea time i yeah. mean i think if i would do that for us yeah, I'll try to. Links, uh, because I like how she, she handled it. I like how she was talking about her being in the industry for two years and she's trying to celebrate mm. that and push her music as well. Actually being a dance hall artist and doing what she's doing. I mean, she needed the platform. She needed to speak more. So we would definitely love to know what her experience is in the music industry in Ghana, mm. being a woman in that genre. I don't think we have a lot of women mm. doing dance hall artist mm. um, um, songs. So... Um, kudos to Wendy, and I hope Shout that Ghana um, media journalism or whatever they call themselves would be a bit more professional because this is, I think, this is the third story coming out of uh, we, Ghana in the, the last other one was one about month. What's, what's that guy's name? Kitty, Kitty. Yeah, when, although we agree that, yeah, Kitty was, yeah, was it was late, quite but, late, but the way you, um, what you call it now, the way you addressed him live on air was, was wrong, also, yeah, was totally wrong, okay. Um, tea time continues right after this very short break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Baba? Now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling all right. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes they look myself minimal. Are you? Mm. music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, <laughs> welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Big Brother Niger Gifty Powers has weighed in on going nude for a job. She says, I think it's okay to expose one's body, but it is not a do or die affair. As long as there is mutual understanding about limits on body areas to be exposed with the person in charge of the project, then you're good to go. End of quote. 
there's certain jobs that are based on creativity and um, being able to express yourself. That is, expression is what could can tell the story. So, so yes. <laughs> if it takes no, if it takes no, no. Let's 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 face it. They're, so they're, if, if if are you saying that even if there's an agreement and we are, we already said that this boundary we're not crossing it. No, no, because no, your creativity is to, playing like uh, okay. No, that's what I'm getting to. That a lot of people tend to come for actresses that expose their bodies. Oh, okay. But they need to know that once you are taking up a job. There's an agreement, there's a vision by the director, by the producer that they have for their movies. And if they see that a naked lady is what will tell the story the way they want to tell it. It's all about creativity and being, bringing your dreams to life. You may not see it that way, but an artistic mind will probably watch that same thing and be like, why is she wearing clothes? You're trying oh, wow. to depict this. Why is she wearing clothes? No, that's how the mind works. So creativity is something that you need to focus on, on in this part of the world. We watch a lot of American movies and we see their girls go naked. We see actual sex scenes, right? And we don't have a problem with it. But here in Nigeria, the moment they start kissing by the side of the face, the scene has changed. Why? We want to see more because that is what would actually. No, you see those um creative if, uh, parts. Those where... parts where they start kissing <laughs> on the chain, right, and take it off. When you finish watching that movie, do you feel like you've not gotten the point yes, of the story? Yes, because now uh -huh. I'll not be able to tell how much they love each other. Uh -uh. Because sometimes it takes certain emotions to be able to tell the feelings this person has for that person. If you, you I know, think, sometimes I think, it takes I think you we are not on the same wavelength. <laughs> so let me just talk about what Gift is talking about. Yes, I, I get mean, what Gift is talking she's about. She's saying that it is allowed and we need to be more um, welcoming of um, things like that. Yeah. Because like you said, if we're, we're, the same people that will criticize it in a Hollywood movie are the same people that now would which? enjoy it in uh, Hollywood, uh, Hollywood. And I mean, 365 Days is trending. And we know that is not a children's movie. We know what will happen. A lot of people are watching it, tweeting about it. Just imagine 365 Days was done by Nollywood actors. You, you know what would be going on right now. So I think we need to be more open-minded and um, stop the whole double standard thing. Because if it's done by a white person, it just takes us back to colorism and racism. If it's done by a white person, it's cool, it's nice. Or if it's done by a foreign platform, it is good. But if our actors and actresses in Nigeria or in Africa does it, then there is a big deal. So from what she's saying, she's just advising people in the industry to at least have like a negotiation. So you're supposed to be nude in the movie or in the shoot understood but what are the limits where are we stopping is this nude complete nude is it um mm. halfway nude is it don't say don't agree to halfway and then suddenly because your creativity is running wild you're not saying until you have to remove everything that was not the agreement do you understand so, no definitely yeah. they need to stick to agreements which is what gifty is talking about but i also want people because a lot of i've been seeing a lot of backlash i went to the comment section where this mm. was posted Anything and they said oh, it's, it's because anyway. it's because you you like to expose your body it's because you're indecent it's because you're this but you need to know that this person is an actress it's the life they chose it's not a lawyer now saying i feel like exposing my body no that's not a lawyer's job to do but an actress is saying i'm exposing and it's in line of duty so why come for her you need to know that artistic space or creative space has to be respected as well and it's independent and some of us actually want to be able to follow the story through oh wow i saw <laughs> i saw a funny tweet yesterday someone said um you are saying that your 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 body is an artwork that people should enjoy. Then mm. somebody saves your artwork on their gallery and you're complaining because I think <laughs> that there was a conversation around that. Anyway, let's well, move that, on. Well, that, that, that can be argued because it's without my consent. But as, as, Which as, consent? As... I don't understand. You put out your body to millions of people on Twitter, on Facebook. So everybody should come to you one after the other to say, please, Elsie, can, I, can save I save it? No, no, that's can a I? different case. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, by all means, please save. <laughs> where, where can I find you? I need to save too. Moving on, like I said. <laughs> Before I marry you, you have to put it at the back of your mind that you will stop going to any kind of school, either Islamia or Western education. You have to gather all the knowledge you want to acquire in life because the moment you become my wife you will not go anywhere can we not talk about this because um this guy is totally ignorant and um 
I don't know. I don't know. I wonder how people still think like this in 2020. And this is part of the things we say that religion is part of the biggest problems in. in, in I don't this think this is religion because it's even saying even if it's Islamia, which is his religious um, education, that he's not interested. I think it's still all, it's all boils down to religion as well, or controlling men. Okay, let's leave religion out Please, of this. Leave, let's just leave put my dear religion alone. Let's just let's just put controlling men because there are men who who can't stand the competition. You can't stand when a woman is as enlightened or as exposed as you are or as hardworking. Again, working. he's not saying don't be exposed. He said gather your exposure before we marry. It's still, the, yeah, because there's no way you can learn everything, even before marriage. Every mm. day, we learn every single day. I can decide to take a course today now and say I want to do my master's. After my master's, I'll do my PhD. After my PhD, I'll go and do this. I'll go and do, I'll do a lot of other things just to better myself every single day. So you can't tell me to stop learning. Then just tell me to stop living. Hmm. It's that simple because if you tell me to stop learning, that means there's no point being alive because I learn every single day and you're telling me I can't go to... You, you're saying that you can't go to an institution. What about... You say open to online studies though. <laughs> so you can't go anywhere, <laughs> Since right? you can't go, can I, can I study me. online? But don't tell me not to better myself. That's a hmm. toxic man out there, right yeah, there, I, sorry. I, well, I agree, I agree with that. Um, but when it comes to relationship, I think I'm a fan of people creating their rules and finding the person that can good. align mm -hmm. with it and, you know, go by it. So the good thing is that he's saying it before he gets married, so I assume. So if a woman decides to walk into that, then understanding, she's cool with it, she's oh, cool with it right? True. So um, that's just where I'm going to look at it from because having an opinion on opinions like this can be really stressful because it is what he wants. And, there is, a man, <laughs> and <relationship. laughs> there is a man for every woman and there's a woman for every man. So he owes whatever woman that is going to get married to him the the explanation and to let the person know this is how i want to so the is, approval yeah, do you understand and but my own question now is like you said let's not be toxic is does this apply to him as well or is it a case of because you are the wife you cannot go anywhere but yeah. Myself, I'm the man. Then. I can keep studying for other degrees and all. But you know what? At the I same time, I don't, it I don't, is his business I don't, I don't, anyway. I don't even want to make this look like it's okay in any way because, regardless, to me, it's disturbing. I see it as a man who is a control freak mm. and has a problem with. It may sound like oh, exposure is not the problem, but I feel like you have a bit of inferiority complex somewhere. Mm. And yeah. like you said, learning never, never ends. You have mm. to keep learning. Um, not going anywhere doesn't mean that the woman is supposed to be. I know there's something they call eleha that they don't leave the house. You know that's another way of life actually. So maybe well, he needs to expand the streets to make people understand where he's coming from. But um, <sighs> assuming. Shout out to him if he finds so a woman. To, of course he will. Ah, and if this she's is fine with it, we respect you. Yeah. But don't come and. Um, What's it called now? Infect us with your stupidity. Oh, goodness. Okay, moving on real quick because our time is almost up. But Barry Ferrell avoids jail time after taking plea deal over tax evasion charges. The former Victoria's Secret model will serve nine months of community service in Israel while her mother will spend 16 months behind bars for her role in the scandal. According to the Times of Israel, the deal also orders both women to pay almost $725,000 dollars in fines and 2.3 million dollars in back taxes they had been under investigation in their homeland for several years amid allegations suggesting they had misled tax authorities about um, her earnings and whereabouts from 2009 to 2012. Hmm. i don't know why the woman is the mother is the one serving jail time because um i think she's the one that was supposed to be reporting the tax and paying it off while she was because she travels she's a supermodel and all mm. that but you are the one who lives in the own country and you're getting you know they just don't see it as um somebody working there as long as you're getting some money being sent to your accounts you're supposed to put all that into your tax and so all. she's the one that did not remit the tax because from the it's, story it's quite complicated it is actually because from the story you see that um, at some point, they were claiming that um, the model herself was not living in Israel. Mm. And then prosecutors are saying that that's not true because they realized that she was actually based in a certain cell or something mm. in Israel as well. So it's a complicated one. Okay, I don't sure know why now. the mom has to go to jail and then she has to do community service. But Abiyamo, 
Yeah. Well, you could have been <laughs> sacrificed. Like, ah, you're yeah, the head of the house. We cannot have... Head of the house. Uh, oh, okay, breadwinner. Yeah, you're mm. the breadwinner. That We cannot uh, jeopardize that. So you just go, I'll do it for you. It could oh. be a case of loyalty. So whichever way it is, um, I just hope um, a lot of celebrities would learn from this. Um, if you live in your home country and you walk somewhere else, it doesn't mean you shouldn't remit tax to your home country. Mm -hmm. It's just part of your civic duty as, as, as a citizen and you should do that. You should pay taxes. I pay my tax, so oh, why wow. not pay I was going to say, I can't wait for when our tax laws and remitting will be this strong here. I, I think we'll have... Ex well, we need you more know what? You know why they um, you know why they are really punished like that because they are getting the value for their tax. Mm. But we are paying tax and we are not getting the value for what we pay. Some you of us are paying tax. Oh, some of us, at least I know every working organization mm -hmm. pays tax. They mm -hmm. take the tax from your salary before you even get it. They've taken it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So. And we're not getting the value. We still have bad roads. We still have terrible electricity supply. We still have terrible water supply. We still have a lot of terrible infrastructures. Things that we're entitled to that we do not get. So if you jail me for tax evasion, God is watching you. Uh, okay. I think that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And please do send your opinions, observation, or whatever you think about all the stories discussed to 0906000. 6, Five seven one nine or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also, watch um, Tea Time on R2 TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, to go to my amazing co anchor, yeah, that's me. Walsh, okay, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe. <laughs>